Okay, welcome to the Flex Effects Tutorials. Uh, this tutorial is going to be a little bit long one. It's a two-part tutorial and really going to go over how to create 3D assets and create your scenes for uh, when you're doing a uh, your, your, your short film or your movie or your animation. Uh, really important to have a good set. I mean, it sets the tone for the entire uh, uh, film. And as you can see here, this is a medieval d dining room I created. Um, I am going to kind of go over in this how different ways on how to create the different assets, different walls, textures, uh, try and cover a couple different ways. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So I try to combine using uh, assets I have and then creating ones I don't. So I'm going to start out here. Um, I actually bought the, uh, the Rome Fantasy Pack and I'm going to start with uh, creating the floor. So I'm gonna come over here. I, there's a ground texture, stone texture I like from this pack. I'm gonna pull it in. So again, don't get too hung up on the specifics. I'll show you how to use any texture uh, that you want. And I'm gonna just start with this one. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull this texture in and center it. And before I do anything, I really wanna make sure the scale of everything I do is okay. Uh, so I'm gonna just pull in a character. It doesn't matter which one. Um, pull in this knight uh, just to make sure that the table, the chairs, because you will find when you buy stuff, especially on the marketplace, it's, it doesn't always line up perfectly on scale. Some are too large, too small, and this is a chance to kind of make everything fit. So I'm going to just come over here to my motions, and I'm just going to throw a sitting motion in here. I don't really have anything good lined up, but here's one where someone sits. So I'm just going to pull it up run it out till he actually sits down and save it right there. So um, one of the things you can do here is, let me redo that. Um, there we go. That motion's fine. So I'm going to just cut this up so that it uh, only has him sitting down. I don't, I don't need the actual motion because I'm going to build the entire scene from the first frame. Uh, very important because certain things will get automatically keyframed if you have your your marker on your timeline moved out you'll start your animation things will start moving on you so definitely get everything zeroed out uh, when you're creating a set unless you want them to move um, and again the auto keyframe is really helpful but it can uh, confuse things it's not hard to fix but it's still if you have several hundred items that you have to go through one by one and fix keyframes. It's just a pain. So, all right. So on this castle pack I bought, I've got a table. Um, I'm, I'm going to use this particular table, and you can see right away it's not scaled properly. It 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 doesn't really fit with the night, and we'll fix that. The other thing I want to point out, if you go to, and I'll put links below, Turbo Squid, SketchUp. Uh, free 3D. You can get tables, chairs, all, all of these assets you can find for free. I just happen to have a few of these uh, playsets, so I'm going to use assets that I already have. But again, we'll kind of talk about as we go through how to find these free. But the biggest key is a Google search. You know, free 3D table, frankly, will give you uh, several options. Um, the uh, most important thing is, like I said, just to Use your imagination, find what you want. But one of the things I want to show here is how we can take things that don't, that aren't perfect fits and we can make them fit the, uh, the scene as we want it. So, so first thing I'm going to do is just make sure the chair's lined up. Um, he's sitting fine, but I might play with having him sit up just a little bit. Um, you can um, just go into your, uh, select your character, go into your motion, select your... Uh, your uh, motion layer and I'm gonna lift them up just a little bit because it's just want to get it right where I want so I want them sitting up a little bit and now I can take the chair and I can make adjustments I can either use the scale uh, changing just specifics or I can hit the R key and just stretch things up or down how I want them um, just um, important care if you want to go to the scale uh, so you can select, you see the little blocks on each end. That's how you know you're in that tool. And you get there by just hitting R. You can return to your traditional for moving uh, with hitting the W. So um, take a look, see if I like that. Now I'm going to play around with the table. So I'm going to select the table. And I can I'll try 120%, make it a little wider. Go 
got that. Got it wider, longer, and now taller. So it looks about right. It's a little tall. Um, but I'm gonna, for the sake of this, I could spend 20, 30 minutes fooling around. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it. Let me just see how he sits underneath. I want room so that I can keyframe fairly easy. Um, so, and again, since I'm gonna move him off, he's only for scale. I'm just trying to get a look at how he'd look on the table. Um, table's probably a little tall, but Kind of like that. I think that's what I want. Get the chair lined up. And, and I think I can build the room around that. So let me pull him out. And then I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to get rid of the animation. And again, the with the antennas, he was there for just, again, helping me get that table and chair. So now I can build everything around the table and chair. Um, so... I do need to make the textures match from the table to the chair and I don't for for uh, for kind of a Lord's a medieval dining room I don't that's not really the surface I want I like the wood that's on the chair but as you can see if you look over to the right I'm not gonna be able to use that so one of the sideboards I want to use for later it, it is along the same lines got the same wood so I'm just gonna pull that one up and uh, I like that texture, so I'm going to just leave that there for now, clean it up so it's 90 degrees. Um, yeah, okay, so I'm going to use the texture. I'm going to show you how to use the texture. So I've got a table I like, but I don't like the uh, texture on it. So I'm going to show you how to uh, use the sideboard texture on the table. So if I select the texture itself and then I launch my editor and uh, you can see down there to the lower uh, lower right and you launch it into to an editor in this case I have mine set up for Photoshop and it'll pull the texture itself in I've already pulled in the one from the sideboard and actually you can see there that's how I'm gonna make it look in the end but, but we'll kinda go through the steps it's it's really not that hard so I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna drag that new texture in because I'm just gonna use the old texture as a, uh, a template so um, there's easier ways to do what I'm about to do, but um, really I just should have erased, used the magic eraser. But, um, but anyway, I'm going to clean it up here um, so that I, I, I don't have uh, any overlap. Um, really just, if you hold the shift key, it'll eventually erase to a straight line. Then I can uh, hit control T to get into the transform tool and I'll stretch it out and get everything to uh, to line up over the tabletop. Um, sometimes when I talk, I don't do these things the most efficiently. Just make sure you cover the entire tabletop. You know, you can you can do other things. You can use other textures. You can go to, and I'll show you later, there's uh, some really good websites, like uh, I think it's called texture.com. I'll give you the exact website here in a minute, and I'll put it below as well. But there's um, plenty of places you can find wood textures, different, uh, depending on what you want to do. And in this case, I, I do want to make everything match uh, with uh, the sideboard, so I'm going to use this texture. So if I cover up the old texture completely, then I am should be good. So I drag the, uh, could have duplicated it. I'll drag the uh, texture again in for so we can do the uh, part that covers the legs uh, on that and then I'm going to clean that up just like I, I did on the other one just kind of whoops just and again hold shift with the eraser tool and you can use the magic eraser if you just want to get rid of a single color like the white background it's pretty easy um, now I'm going to use my transform tool control T stretch it out and I'm going to lay it over the, uh, this, the, this part of the uh, table, to, which again was used to create the legs. Um, I'm going to lay that overneath. That's a little bigger than I want. Let me zoom out here. Control. Let me hit the. Uh, there we go. Let me bring that in and get that where I want it. And you can stretch it. I'm going to just stretch it here. Uh, I think that'll make the point. So, 
you can see here we're again pretty straightforward and you can see it kind of lines up with what I had done on the original and I can uh, simply save it to a PNG and or frankly a JPEG for this particular texture. If you have anything transparent when you're coming in Photoshop, like you've deleted edges, which we'll see later when we do the carpets, use a PNG, but for something like this, you can use a JPEG. So we're gonna come in here, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace the one texture. Um, so we'll come out here to where I saved that particular texture. There we go. And sorry, I have some things over the side on my monitor. So I'm gonna come over here and uh, pull the table diffuse, put it on the table, and there you go. So you can play with the offset and do different things to get it to line up, um, but this is, this is good enough to, to show you kind of what I want to do. So, so now we have all the textures matching and we have our main dining room table, chairs, everything matches. And, 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 and again, um, you'll notice there's no normal here. Uh, you can create a normal map and I'll, I'll be showing a couple of different options for creating normal maps and, and height maps and everything else here as we go through. Uh, so I won't do it with this particular table. Uh, we'll, we'll just kind of run run through and we'll cover that as, as, as we move forward. Um, when I use the, uh, the rotation tool, uh, I just kind of watch the rotation. And in this case, since I want everything to line up, um, you know, I'll, I'll just uh, do that there. I'm going to put four chairs here. Uh, you can also, again, just tell it to turn 90 degrees in your rotate, whether you're on the X, Y, or Z axis, depending on the, uh, the what you're, what you're trying to rotate and what axis you want to move on. I just use the rotation tool most of the time. Get, it's just fine with me. I'm also going to show you, we're going to have a lot of assets on this. I'm going to show you how to organize those as well. I did a tutorial on that, um, on that, on that subject recently. Uh, and, um, we'll, uh, we'll kind of cover that. So right now, all I'm doing really is just, um, making sure that I'll, you know, I'm going to have, uh, nine chairs, uh, since it's kind of, I figure, you know, medieval, you're not going to have someone sit at each end of the table. The Lord would sit at the one end and then his guests would sit on the sides. So, so for this scene, that's, that's the decision I made and kind of see where we're at. Uh, the sideboard's a little small, but we'll, we'll fix that later. So, um, let's see what I want to do here. So, uh, Let's go back into this, and I think it's time to work on the texture. But so let's 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 do the floor. So we're going to use the texture I pulled from the Rome playset, and then I'm going to show you how to change it and create normal maps, etc., with an alternate uh, flooring. So first thing I want to do is kind of figure out the size I want. So you know I'm going to play around with uh, the size. I'm also going to narrow the depth. You don't have to, but I will tell you that. Uh, sometimes when you're dealing with texture overlap, if your texture is too thick, and we're not going to have that problem here, it will actually, if you move the camera while you're, uh, while you're setting up your, your scene, it, 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 the two textures will conflict and they'll kind of hop before each other and kind of give you a flickering look. So, so not, not a problem for this, but I did just, just as a matter of habit, uh, reduce the size. So put the table where I want it. I like that. Um, line up the chairs. I think I'm good with all of this. So, so the next thing I want to show you is just if you select, I'm going to select all the chairs and I'm just going to parent them to the table. This way when I move the table or if I turn the table on and off. So I just go down over here to the right and after selecting all of them, I select attach and then I'm going to come over here and just click on the table. And if you look here now, it moved all the chairs under the table. So if I move the table now, it will move all the chairs, but I can still move the chairs individually by just uh, opening the folder and then I can select a chair. So it, it just helps me keep things organized. And now you can see how easy it is to just move the table. So. Uh, proper use of the attach and parenting uh, and definitely use the attach that uh, as opposed to the parent um, and it'll work well so so now we've got the floor where we want it it's kind of like 300% by 200% that's a good size for me and you'll notice the stones of course scaled up so we're gonna go and fix the tiling do not go all the way to the bottom to the U UV but just go to the offset and the tiling right below the use sRGB, select your uh, 
select your uh, texture and now we're going to go ahead and line that up so um, here we go so we're going to take the uh, there we go uh, would use the same ratio uh, and this one did have a normal mount it came with everything normal height bump because you know again the texture came with the the um, I just should mention that came with the the asset but but again we're gonna cover as we go forward how to create all of those in different ways so um, so if you're bringing in your own texture don't worry about it uh, the fact that I'm using the existing one because we're gonna cover both so as you can see I, I set the ratio to the same way I scaled up the uh, texture three by two and you do have to go through the normal and each one individually uh, for whatever reason when you select to modify each texture the same it doesn't allow you to uh, change the scale so um, so as you can see here got a floor got our sideboard there um, and we have the basis we'll, we'll build the room around so let's see let me show you how so I'm gonna go out here to uh, texturelive.com texturelib.com and you sign up here and you can get they give you like three or four free textures a day um, and you can, as you can see over here to the right, you have tons of different styles of textures. Some are tileable, some are not. Uh, the ones you always want to use is seamless if you're going to have to change like the tiling, because seamless then each each top, each uh, texture it, as you lay them and put them against each other will uh, will match perfectly. If you pick the ones that are not seamless, really, unless you're going to just use that texture as it is and scale it, it won't look good. So let's pick this seamless texture for the old pavement pattern. And I'm gonna that I'm gonna take the smaller one because I'm using it for a floor, and I'm gonna pick 2048 by 2048. You can do 1024 by 1024, uh, you know, if you if you don't need it to be highly uh, detailed, um, you know, which, whatever works for you. I'm, I'm gonna do the 2048 by 2048, and I'm gonna save it out here in my tutorial library, and. Uh, create a folder for the floor and so this way you'll have uh, two options and and just you know what we're going through here works for walls works for anything windows works for floors roofs, ceilings whatever so so the so we're not going to do this for each one but I'll show you it once and then hopefully you'll uh, you know you'll be able to use that so I'm going to drag in the uh, the new texture it's pretty simple and there you go you can see it uh, it just takes the place of the old one just, just drag it in now it's going to look funny because i have the normal maps and the displacement and roughness all based on the uh, the old texture so we'll we'll create our own normal map for this so let's delete these assets since the metallic is just a flat black you can leave that there uh, we if you want to use a traditional texture to go away uh, i like to use the pbr so one way to do it is with the surface sub substance super tools for surfaces and the other way is uh, to uh, create your normal map in uh, Photoshop depending on what you have so and you don't need any really so I'm going to just go over here as you saw I pulled it into Photoshop I go to filter 3d create a normal map I like normal versus grayscale um, this will open you see the screen open up for adjusting and creating your normal map I like to use the cube although you can see everything right there on on the floor um, and you have two main controls that all I'm going to cover now they're specific tutorials just on this subject and the main ones are the blur how much detail you want in your normal map remember this is how the how it's going to react to light and give the it's, it's essentially faking it a 3d uh, rendering so to speak so the light will react based on the normal map and it, since this is stone you you want it pretty detailed if it was cloth or fabric you know you would blur it out so I'm gonna play around with the amount of detail till I get what I like and uh, like I said I'm not gonna fool around with some of the other uh, controls just because I, I don't feel that's necessary for this particular tutorial so I'm gonna come over here to layers now I have a have a have a normal map and just you can see your channels and etc but anyway for right now let's just focus on the normal map and save it out I'm gonna save it out as a PNG I suggest you save your normal maps etc out as PNGs I don't know why uh, it just for me it, it, it seems to work better and this way I don't have to worry if I have transparent parts or not I don't have to second-guess myself so I, so I save it out and 
we can go back in and we'll load up the uh, the normal map under the uh, it goes in the same place as bump and when you load the bump in it'll give you the option of, of a bump map or a normal map um, if you don't want to get heavily into one versus the other just remember that one's just to be honest one's uh, one's gray and one's kind of this purplish so the uh, but again I like the normal maps then when you go here so you can tell it normal or bump I went normal clicked OK and there you go now if you look you can see there's a texture to the stone um, apologize if I'm going fast uh, this is a long tutorial and I want to uh, cover as much and I'm assuming a basic understanding of uh, of iClone so um, so that's assumed here so um, so there you go so you can see and you adjust your strength of your normal map and it can determine how rough you know how how have how, what percentage to apply the normal map so there you go I kind of like that so right so now you can see we have a whole new floor and we created it with free assets as long as you have you know again if you and you don't need if you don't have Photoshop or you don't have the substance tools you can you don't need to use them you can it would look just fine um, it's just I happen to own Photoshop I do a lot of work in After Effects so um, make sure oh the other thing is make sure your normal map and your uh, and your all your, all the different uh, maps and textures have the same tiling um, for me I have not been able to find a way to select all of them and do it with one command that works so you have to go through each one individually make sure they line up and otherwise it, with the light reacting differently your normal map will kind of be a mess so um, so now I'm going to delete everything but the uh, diffuse map I'm going to show you how to use the surface uh, substance super tools so you can see I dragged over the B2M and I just drag it in and it will create the displacement map the roughness map it'll it'll create all of the uh, the different um, uh, different maps you need in support of that texture uh, automatically and then I'm, I'm not going to go through each one because, again, there's some really good tutorials on that already. Uh, but you can adjust your normal strength right there. You just go down to the, uh, the, the output section and just uh, open up whichever you know, part you want to adjust. You can see there's global changes. There's color. There's, uh, in this case, uh, the normal map. I'm, I'm making adjustments to the strength and uh, just kind of getting it where I want it. And, and again, there's... Actually, the best place for the uh, B2M uh, tool is uh, the, um, the, uh, the folks at Reillusion have a really good uh, tutorial on that, and, and I can put a link down there. Uh, I'll try and remember uh, to put, put the link to that. So if you want to learn more, if you have that tool on how to really tweak these, but for a floor, that's good enough. Now you'll notice the other thing is, is I want to make that floor a little darker. Um, so again, I can come over to the Adjust Color tab which is just right of where we launch our editor and the thing I like about adjusting this here is that I can do the adjustment and I can change my mind later I don't have to go into an external program and I can change the hue the darkness contrast and and there we go so so that's a new new floor it's a little fancier than the stone floor um, I actually am gonna go back to the other floor just because I like it better but I I wanted to show you how to uh, modify and create your own textures and hopefully that helped um, again I, the main thing about this tutorial is to kind of give you the basics and show you some things I did uh, to create my room and give you options so uh, I'm going to do the same exact thing and I'm going to create a wall so I'm going to grab this wall from um, another pack I have uh, a medieval building pack and and there's some rough concrete textures I just happen to like but you can do exactly the same thing go out to the um, texture library.com or a similar uh, heck just go into Google and type that you want a concrete texture and go into our images and you'll find dozens of high resolution textures textures that you're allowed to use um, you can also and I'll show you how to put this on different type of surfaces and, and, and put images on not just uh, you know so these have thickness if we use some of the create surface tools they're they're, they're completely uh, flat neither one really matters but I'll, I'll show you how to do that so you can see here I I'm doing the same thing I brought the texture and I want for a wall I'm scaling it up 
Um, I'm going to select it. And I'm going to look at the tiling um, and try some different options. Well, that doesn't look good. Um, let's see. There we go. Yeah, I like that. All right, so that'll be good. And I'm going to put a bunch of stuff on the wall so it'll line itself up. I think it'll look good when I'm done. But I want it kind of a rough concrete texture. I mean, it's a big castle but it, that, that we're assuming is in, but it's not... It's not the grand castle. It's not like the King of England type thing where you're going to have these just luxurious walls. So so we've got that. So now it's a kitchen. Uh, I mean, it's a dining room. So we need a fireplace, right? And so I'm going to go down here. Um, I have fireplace assets from the castle pack that I picked up on the marketplace. I like them. Um, and I'm, so I'm going to go ahead and use that asset. Again, there, you can find them for free if you want. Get that out at 90 degrees. And now I'll hit. Here we go. Let me uh, move that along. And remember, if you have the tool in world, it'll move it in according to the uh, kind of like the base, the whole world setup. It'll move it along there. But like if you're making a room or something, always use this tool in uh in local mode because this way it'll move it along the axis of, of essentially perpendicular and parallel to the uh, to the object itself and especially on something like like this a table whatever it, it's better to have the tool um, you know in my opinion move it along those lines so I'm gonna scale this up um, yeah 120 percent looks good because you know the tension is it's a big old fireplace I'm gonna make sure I can see the background here um, and so the next time I do, I'm going to create a surface, a plane, because uh, I'm going to create the fire. So you may have seen that I have a fire in the fireplace and, and it's moving. I use a video. We'll, we'll talk about how to do that here in a little bit. So I'm going to align this. This uh, deal. Let me scale it down. All right. So let me get it in here. So the, so basically the way I do the uh, fire and I'm, there's intentionally going to be a problem here. I'm going to show you it's an easy fix. But I'm gonna just kind of show you how easy it is to fix stuff when you're when you're doing all this. And when I bring the video in, you'll see what I mean. So for right now, I'm gonna kind of get the plane in place and sized up. Just as a word of, uh, I should have brought the video in first, and I wouldn't have to make any changes. But again, I just kind of want to walk you through some things, and uh, this will kind of show you. Um, you know how to stretch stuff, what what the impact is, and you know how to keep um, everything lined up. So I'm going to cover that back plane. Uh, the video of fire I actually used uh, a uh, a fire element. You can get green screen fire uh, again on YouTube. You can download free. There's plenty of folks that have stuff out there. Um, I used an asset I I used for After Effects that I got from Video Copilot. Um, so I already had it, but again, just go green screen fire and you can get, uh, or you can go fireplace fire and use something right there. And there are plenty of free assets that folks are more than willing to let you use. So, so again, Google's your friend and YouTube as well. So just kind of keep that in mind. And um, as we kind of go through all this stuff and here we go. So I'm gonna find the fire. Oh, this is really important. If you use an MPEG, it will look fine when you're running your scene and in the timeline, the fire will roar. And when you render it out, it won't work. Uh, you need to use the uh, an AVI. I think there's other supported uh, file types, but AVI works fine. They're bigger files, which kind of sucks. But um, so so this the file I'm pulling in is an AVI. So you can see, drag it in here, hold it over the surface, and it'll apply the video, and you'll see where I made a mistake, right? The fire's going sideways, just to make my point, right? <laughs> That's kind of stupid. So, um, so it's easy fix, right? Just rotate it, and and now I'm gonna, you know, and it's that simple. And 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 again, I'm not gonna go through a big effort to make a big 3D. I I, I know they have popcorn effects and different things to make fire. I just to me, this was quick. It's easy, and I think it looks just fine. Again, W and R key, just get it sized where you want it. Um, fire's kind of up in the chimney a little bit, so let me play around till I find what I want. And 
you know, for, for the background, this is going to look really good, right? And, and by the way, if you take and you create a PNG and, and you can go in and use multiple layers, uh, you can see the texture sticking up through the back there. It shouldn't be. Let me move that. But you can take multiple layers. There's lots of things you can do if, if you want to make uh, the fire look a little, give it a little depth. Um, but for me, that is more than enough for the scene that, that I'm trying to create because it's a big scene, as you saw from the opening. So nothing should be overly uh, focused on. So I'm going to bring the sideboard over here. If you lock the scale, it'll just scale the thing up uh, around the, uh, the root and, you know, so, but if you want to only move in one scale, then just unlock it, right? So real simple. Then remember, if you want to duplicate an item, hold the control key, just grab one of the axes and pull it and it'll automatically duplicate something, same scale, same everything. And, um, you know, and, and that's nice. And by the way, if you grab one of these deals where I created like the subfolder, like the table, let's just say you wanted a f two tables with chairs, you're creating a big dining room, with multiple tables. Create the table, the chairs, parent the chairs to the table, select the table, and do the same thing. Control and yank it, and it will recreate all the sub assemblies that are selected to it. So it gives you some stuff. So we'll go over here. What, what do we want to look for? And uh, create a tapestry. Okay. So just, you'll see I just type in medieval tapestries, and I have to go over to images, and I've got access to all these tapestries almost all of which can be downloaded uh remember um you know i'm not selling these most the only time you get into having to buy stuff most of the time like this is if you're going to uh be selling this commercially this is my hobby so um so anyway i'm just going to save the image as and i'm going to save this tapestry i've already done a bunch of these um and we'll uh here we go let me save it out here Sorry, just give me a second. And I always before, yeah, there we go. I will try to make sure nothing's selected here. And then I'm going to create the plane for it. Um, and because I'm going to attach it to a, just a plane. Um, we don't need, uh, you can go if you want something to have uh, depth in all three axes. You can go to uh, and use one of your primitive shapes, uh, use a rectangle and size it up. Uh, the plane will always be completely flat. I think I, I can demonstrate that. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I don't know if it's necessary, but um, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab the tapestry. Um, there we go, T2. So um, you can see this one I already made. So, but I did at least wanted to show you how I, I found all these tapestries and and how easy it is to uh, create wall hangings, rugs, carpets. And, and again, a lot of these aren't even available. Uh, within the content store or, or the marketplace and or if they are they come with you have to buy a big kit and i just needed some stuff for the wall so i grab some of these i make sure they're sized right i just go by look obviously you can try and figure out you can go into a, another program and figure out the exact dimensions and ratio for the tapestry if, if it's going to be super important to you i didn't need that again i'm going to keep lock all x's and i'm going to lower this uh or lock scale, excuse me, and um, there we go. And that's about the size I want. Let me put it right over the mantle. And you can see in the beginning, I had a bunch of these. We'll do one, just for an example. And I go over here, and there we go. Now, I, I want these things to actually have some depth, so we're actually gonna create a normal map. But the first thing you'll notice is I can't launch my editor, and so, you know, if you're wondering what's wrong, it, it, it's real simple. Uh, is um, it see you can you can load the UV. I guess what I'm, all I'm trying to do is point out that you can't actually access that without embedding. What's what you have to embed the textures. Doesn't matter whether you're PBR traditional. You notice it doesn't give you the option to change the tint or launch. So click on embed textures. Once you embed the textures. Now you can launch your, your editor and, and we can use this to uh, create a small normal map. And again, if you have the Substance Super tools, you can use those. But um, I'm, again, I'm gonna go in Photoshop, generate a normal map, uh, just like we saw before. Um, again, for reasons I, I prefer to work with a cube. Um, and there we go. And again, it's carpet. It's gonna, you know, it's got, you know, you just want to, give it a little bit of sense of depth 
um, and so that it, if, if the camera does get close, it's got some sort of a little bit of a 3D effect. Uh, the roughness map would help. I, I mean, the super tools would be uh, easier, but again, I, I'm, I'm going to show you this way because I found folks, at least I know, are more likely to have those. So once I get that done, I can just bring in the, uh, the normal map. Uh, let me go to the right. Here we go. And I can bring a normal map in, click on OK for normal map. There we go. And now it's now you've got a it's still a flat plane, but the light will will react to it uh, as if it's got some depth to it. And again, I can you can see there a little bit. You can adjust and and this will be much more apparent when we do the carpet here in a few minutes. Um, but now, OK, so now you can see it's starting to look like a room. We've got some tapestries, fireplace. Uh, somehow I have an extra chair. You notice if you double click on the chair, you can still, it'll open the subfolder, go right to the chair. So you can still select individual items, even if you group them. And I'm going to group the fire to the fireplace because I want those two. If I move one, I want it to automatically move the other. Now, when I select the fireplace, if I move it, it moves everything, right? And uh, I'm going to select the tapestry and you know, let's rename it. Just double click on it to rename it. And second let me spell that correctly and now I can again go down to attach click parent and I'm gonna do that to the uh, to the wall itself all right so that kind of ends the first tutorial and we will uh, pick this up with uh, part two thank you